subtracting with zeros can be something difficult for students to master, especially using the traditional method of borrowing. In this video, I'm going to show that traditional method of borrowing, but I'm also going to show two newer methods, one that we call the box method and a second one that we call the mental map, which is similar to the two-digit subtraction that we showed in an earlier video. I'm going to give examples of all three, and then I'm also going to give some examples for you to try on your own. So we're going to use this example of 300 minus 184 for the three methods that I'm going to show. So first, as I said, we're going to start with the traditional method of borrowing. Of course, when we subtract, we notice that we cannot borrow in the ones place because the bottom number is a bigger number. Normally, we would go next door to the next place, which of course is the tens, to borrow. But since it's a zero and we cannot borrow from a zero, we actually have to go over to another place. We borrow from the three and we regroup it into ten tens that we add to the zero. Now I can borrow in order to regroup the ones place. I take one from the tens and turn it into ten ones, which I add to the zero that's already there, and I end up with ten. And now, of course, I can subtract all the way across. Ten minus four is six, nine minus eight is one, and two minus one is one. So we end up with 116. The mistake that most students make in this traditional subtraction method is right here. They most of the time do not make that 10 become a 9 in order to borrow to add the 10 into the 1's place. They just automatically add that 10, forgetting that they have to regroup a second time. Now let's take the same problem and use what we call the box method. And just as it implies, we end up making a box. In looking at the problem, we again start in the 1's place and realize that we cannot subtract. Most students know that that zero is going to turn into a 10. It's a matter of where we get it from. In the box method, we continue until we hit the number that we can borrow from, which in this case is the 3. And we put a box from that 3 all the way to the numbers in front of where we are regrouping, which in this case gives us 30. We subtract 1 from 30, and we get 29, which automatically gives the student that 9 in the middle that in most cases they neglect to regroup for. And of course, when we subtract, we still end up with the 116 that we had before. The third method is one, as I mentioned before, that's similar to the two-digit subtraction mental math. In the two-digit subtraction using the mental math, we actually added to the two numbers in the problem. When we're dealing with zeros all the way across, it doesn't quite work that way. And I'll show you what I mean. So again, we're going to use the same problem with the 300 on the top. Now, if we were to add one to the top and the bottom, we still end up with a problem where we're going to have to borrow to solve it. So instead of adding, we're actually going to do the opposite. We're going to subtract. We're going to subtract 1 from both numbers. This becomes 299, and then the bottom number will give 183. Notice that now when I subtract, there is absolutely no borrowing necessary, and we still end up with our 116 answer. Most students will find this method the easiest because Depending on how large the problem is, they can probably do the subtraction in their head, thus we call it mental math, and there's no need to actually write the problem down, which will be beneficial when they start taking standardized tests that they are limited on the amount of time they have to complete the work. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give a couple of examples, again, with the box method and this mental math, and then give you some to try. So let's take a look at another example. And again, I will work it in both the box and the mental math versions. So let's say we have 500 minus 144. Now again, here we have our double zeros at the top. 
So I can use either the box or the mental map. For the box method, we know that that zero will become a 10. We go all the way to the number that I can borrow from and box it off. So instead of having to borrow from 5, I'm actually borrowing from 50. I take 1 from the 50 and end up with 49. Now I can subtract all the way across. 10 minus 4 is 6, 9 minus 4 is 5, and 4 minus 1 is 3. Now, taking the same problem, let's look at it using the mental math. I have 500 here. When I subtract 1, I end up with 499. When I subtract 1 from 144, I end up with 143. When I subtract the new problem, I still end up with 356. So again, I'm only subtracting 1 from both of the numbers to create the new problem, which doesn't involve any borrowing at all. So when we do these types of problems, we laugh and say that it's so easy it's almost stupid because the students in most cases can subtract these problems very, very simply, unless they make a simple subtraction mistake. But in most cases, they really think that these problems are so simple, they're really stupid because they are. They're very simple when using this method. I'm going to provide another problem for you to try. You can use either method. It does not matter on the test. I will not say which method you need to use. You just have to show whatever work you have, whether it be the boxing or the subtracting of one to write the new problem. So here's the problem that I'd like for you to try. We're going to use 600 minus 227. So stop the video, give this problem a try in either method, or you could even try both as a way to check yourself. After you work them out, start the video again so you can check the answer. All right, let's take a look at what you've done. In the box method, we know the zero, of course, will become 10 because we're going to borrow from the 60, which will become a 59. So we end up with 10 minus 7 is 3, 9 minus 2 is 7, and 5 minus 2 is 3. If you chose to use the mental math version, again, subtracting 1 from each number, we end up with 599 minus 226, and we still get 373 to subtract with. Now, the one time that the mental math when using zeros will not work is when the digit in the ones place happens not to be a zero. Then the subtraction would have to go on either using the traditional method or using the box method. So the box method will actually work either way. Let's take a look at an example there. Let's say we have 506 minus 457. So we notice here that we've got a 6 in the 1's place rather than a 0. So subtracting 1 from my problem really won't help me. It actually doesn't make it any better at all. But I can use the box method because I cannot subtract here. And I know that adding 10 will give me 16 here. I get that by regrouping. I take the 50, using the box method, and change it to a 49. I borrow 1, which regroups into 10 ones. Then from there, I can subtract the rest of the problem. 16 minus 7 is 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0, which of course we don't write the 0 in the front. We leave it as the two-digit number 49. So in cases where there is a borrow, in the ones place, but the number is not a zero, we won't use that mental math. The only time we would use that where we subtract the one from the top and the bottom would be when there's a zero in that place. You could use the subtraction method where you add to it till you get zeros at the bottom, but usually that's so far that it is a little bit more difficult, especially considering we're using three and sometimes four digit numbers. So as I've explained to the students, the easiest way to handle it when you have a number in the one's place and you do have to borrow from a zero is to use the box method. 
If there are zeros all the way across, then use the mental map and subtract one from both numbers. On their subtraction test, I will not specify which method, the traditional, the box, or the so simple it's stupid subtraction method. I'm not going to specify which one the students have to use. It's up to them to decide. Regardless of which method they use, the only thing that I ask is that they show their work, being the boxes, the new problem written, or the traditional with the crossing out and the borrowing. So hopefully this video will help you understand a little bit better the three different methods that I've shown the students to use during subtracting with zeros.